Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is the Magic Review. That's right, we are gonna look at Spider Pen X today from Yigel Masika. Uh, at first, when I saw this come out, I actually thought it was Spider Pen 10, right? Sp with the X, that makes sense, Spider Pen 10. I mean, there's been so many versions of the Spider Pen out, I just thought 10. But it's Spider Pen X, it is, it's Spider Pen X. Uh, I did a review for Spider Pen Pro a while back. And if you haven't seen that, you can go and check that out. Maybe you got that, maybe you purchased that, maybe you have it, maybe you have Tarantula. Some people have asked me, you know, what they like better. And you're probably curious, well, what makes Spider Pen X better than its predecessors? That's why I'm here. Let's talk about it. All right, Spider Pen X, what is it? If you don't know, if you don't know, it is a thread reel. It is an ITR, right? And uh, IT is just one of those magician's tools, right? It's a magician's tool and everyone has an opinion. They like it, they don't like it, right? It works for them or it doesn't work for them. Uh, some people even who like me wear glasses or have diminished eyesight uh, have issues sometimes even finding invisible thread. So if you probably have a history with invisible thread. You might even have a history with thread reels. And just like magic wallets, I think, you know, we, we talk about wallets a lot on the channel. I think every magician is always looking for that next ITR that's gonna be the best, right? We're looking for that next thread reel that's gonna replace all of our thread reels. And we're gonna say, this is the one. This is the one that's an that answers every, you know, every prayer, every wish for us. This is, this is the thread reel we want. And so uh, it's definitely exciting to be here at the beginning of 2022 and to see a brand new ITR come out from Yigel Masika. And I know you've got questions, so let's get to answering them. Let's say you pay $100 to hocus-pocus.com, what will you get? Uh, you get that small box, right? And you slide it out and you'll get the spider pen inside of that. Uh, underneath, there is a A, 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 A battery, four A's, four A's, four A battery. I don't know what you call that. You don't call it triple A, quadruple A. Is it a quadruple A battery? It is a quadruple A battery. That's all it needs. And uh, you get the download code to the video and the video is 43 minutes long and you can download it. There is a link so that you can download the file and watch it offline which is great. Is it what I thought? Yes, it is what I thought because I had the previous one. So the differences between Spider Pen Pro and Spider Pen X are uh, slight. And, and if you've had one or the other, of course, you'll notice uh, noticeable differences. Um, let's talk about the fact that this is completely made out of metal, right? This is completely uh, stainless steel. There's no plastic parts in this at all, so nothing plastic and cheap that's going to break. It is also a real working pen. And you will even talk to you about how you can replace the ink. This will always work. Up, work. So in, this could be your real pen. Uh, it also auto shuts off after non-use. So let's say you haven't touched it in a minute or so, it'll go off on its own, which saves battery life, which is awesome as well. Plus, I believe the previous one didn't take the quadruple A battery, which made the barrel thicker. So this is a thinner pen, okay? The whole idea behind this pen is to have it be less visible, right? Smaller profile, thinner, real, aluminum, Spider Pen X. What's the overall quality and production value of the video? Uh, Yigel does all the teaching. For the most part, he's in a very static, all white room. And he does throw in occasional real world demos with a spectator, but he also does studio presentations as well. And he'll even use red visible thread through some of his tutorials so that you can see everything. As far as what he's gonna teach you in that 43 minutes, you'll get the trailer once again, and he'll show you right at the beginning how this pen works. And he'll walk through what it takes to make something float. His first trick is a walking bill where a crumpled bill uh, rolls across your extended forearms. Then he does a balancing bill effect where he balances a bill on its end and then balances a second bill on top of that. 
He'll talk you through how to float a straw. And then of course his best trick, the floating bill, which really looks completely insane because the bill is so far away from your body, it gently flutters all the way to the ground. And then at your command, it comes back to you. It is a powerhouse trick. And then he does the trick that you see in the trailer, re-leaf, where he plucks a leaf from a tree and then blows it back onto the tree. That is such an insane visual. On the video, there's plenty of tips. Of course, he'll talk to you about how to change the, the tip, what to do if you get broken thread, how to lock the thread into the wax, finding a good anchor point. He talks about lighting and changing the ink in the pen, installing the battery. There's also a great section there where Yigel gives all of his theory on thread and how to use thread and his theory section is pretty fly. Pocket space, that's it, right? There's your, <laughs> there's your pocket space. Uh, it doesn't really go in a pocket. I mean, you could carry it in a pocket, but you're probably gonna wear it uh, with the clip attached somewhere here on the neckline of your shirt or maybe in a few uh, buttons on your shirt right here at the top. Of course, angles and inspectability are limited or not limited to your conditions, right? As far as inspectability goes, nobody's gonna ask to inspect the pen. Nobody should know the pen is in play, right? It's, it's an invisible prop. Nobody should say, hey, wait a minute, what's going on with your pen? If that happens, something you've done something wrong, <laughs> right? If you're holding the pen and making it, you know, that no, you can't. That's that's not the, that's not what you're supposed to do. Uh, angles wise, though, if you've used IT before in the past, then you understand that lighting is crucial. And uh, if you can see the IT, then chances are your spectators can too. So there's a lot of things to consider when using IT um, and. Chances are though, if you've already worked with it, you understand those things. What are the slights and difficulty level of the tricks? Uh, most of it's really easy, right? There's no hard slights involved. Uh, mostly, I think IT is something that you get a feel for. And really, the only way to get a feel for it is through practice and performance. Yes, you'll be able to practice things and sometimes they'll, they'll go great, but nothing beats real world performance, nothing for any trick really, but especially IT because there's a little bit of just, there's a little bit of chaos with IT that you can never plan for. And so who knows what wind might do, or like I was saying earlier, sunlight, um, or, or random spectators that just walk through your performance area <laughs> and, and clip your anchor. So yeah, I, I think that Practice as much as you can at home and get a feel for it so that you, you, you shouldn't be afraid of it. I think that's, that's part of it. I think if it still makes you nervous and you're fearful of it, not only will your spectators pick up on that, right? But I think it just inhibits your performance altogether. So this has to be something that you're like, yeah, it's no big deal. If it breaks, it's no big deal, right? A and you have to feel almost a, a, a strong sense of confidence when working with IT and then get out there in the real world and do tricks for people. The great thing about IT and performing with IT is you can use it as an attention grabber. You don't have to walk up to someone and say, can I show you a trick? You could actually set something up with an anchor and, and get into position and then just wait till someone walks by and then float a bill right in front of them. You pretend like you're you know, focused on what you're doing. Pretend like you're just, oh, I'm just practicing. I'm just, oh, I didn't expect you to walk over. Oh, hey, yeah, look at this. And then they'll call a friend and they'll call a friend. IT floating something is a great way to start a crowd, especially if you're a little nervous and you don't know if you've got the, you don't know how if you have the presentation to just walk up to someone cold and say, hey, can I show you a trick? Doing something with IT, I've done this. I have done, I've done this in school. I've done this outside at a park. Like you just, start floating something or in a restaurant and people who walk by like, what, what? And they'll stop and they'll look because it's such a, it's such an attention grabber. I don't know, maybe you need that. Maybe you need some sort of attention grabber that you think would help start the conversation and draw a crowd. I think uh, IT work is a great thing for that. And to keep going off on a tangent <laughs> like I was, uh, another thing IT is great for is impressing somebody uh, that you need to impress. Like, so you wanna get a gig, at a restaurant or you wanna get a gig doing a walk around and they say, well, show me a trick. Don't show them a card trick, okay? 
Don't show them a card trick. I know you got skills to pay the bills. That's fine. Show them something that's going to blow their socks off in a couple of minutes or a couple seconds, right? Show them something with IT. Make something float. Okay? You do that, it'll get you gigs. All right, so set up and reset. Uh, like I said, you need a battery, right? You need a battery. The battery will last as long as it lasts, right? So there's no way. I think he said like one and a half months. It'll last one and a half months. And please, if you're going to store it for a long time, take the battery out, okay? Take the battery out of anything that you store for a long time. Batteries corrode and your props get ruined if you leave batteries in things for too long. Uh, what else? Thread breaks, right? Thread breaks. And so it's good to get some backup thread just in case. You might want to have an extra spool lying around, especially if you're going to do table hopping. You don't want your thread to break and then you're messed up for the rest of the night. You want to be able to just grab an extra spool and slide it right in. So that's helpful. Positives. All right, so what are the positives? Yigel spider pen seems to get better and better. This is a fantastic prop that you'll get a lot of use out of. Negatives. All right, so what are the negatives? Um, the negatives for me with spider pen have always been the same. It's a pen. And I would wear a pen in my pants, right? In my pockets, either in the front pockets or in the back. That's what looks natural to me because of how I dress. Now, occasionally I wear a suit. If I wore a suit, then yes, I would stick a pen in the breast coat pocket. And there, that would be a great place for your spider pen. But if you wear a t-shirt, it looks a little unnatural to stick a dress pen in your collar, I think. Now, if you're wearing a button-up, and that's what Yigel's wearing, uh, he puts it in just the little button section area right here. And again, it might be a little odd, or you, at least you might feel odd wearing it. I think the point to make is you don't draw attention to it, and, and they won't notice it, right? It just becomes one of those things. If you don't, if you don't fidget with it or draw attention to it, people might not notice it. But I'm just saying that a dress pen sticking out of my uh, collar doesn't seem completely natural. Another thing that I want you to know is most of these tricks require the thread to be anchored somewhere out there. Okay. Now you can do a lot of uh, tricks where things float right in front of the spectator and everything's in this bubble, right? Everything's in your own bubble. But I'm saying you might know those tricks already, but the tricks that are on this video, most of them require an anchor that's somewhere out there, okay? Is it worth your money? It is a hundred bucks. It's a hundred dollars. And let's just recap, okay? That was funny. It's a pen. Recap. It's a real pen and it's all stainless steel, right? Stainless steel. And there's a motherboard in there, okay? There's a motherboard, a little tiny motherboard, but there's still a motherboard in there. Uh, so that, you know, technology and stuff, that costs money. And when it's, this isn't just one trick, right? This is not just one trick. This is a utility. This is a utility, which means utilities can do as much as you want them to, as be as creative as you want it to be. So this is something that you would get to last you years. So you should get years of performance out of this. But don't just take my word for it. Never, never take my word for it. Please, if you're going to drop $100, make sure you get more than one opinion, all right? Some other reviews will come out for sure, okay? Go read the threads out there on the internet. That's another funny one, okay? So the, the forums, right? The forums. Go read the forums. See what other people are saying. Uh, wherever you purchase this, you know, go check out their reviews. Definitely talk to people and make sure that this is what you want before you spend your money. All right, that's everything I can say about Spider Pen X from Yigel Masika. And of course, I want to thank Hocus-Pocus.com for allowing me to have this so that I could do the review for you. And if you'd like to purchase it for yourself, that's where I would go, Hocus-Pocus.com. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.